Greetings and welcome to the Mount Rushmore podcast. My name is Jeff and I'm joined as always by my good buddies, Richard. Hello. And Michael. Howdy. These dudes, they debate, deliberate the most ubiquitous aspects of many topics. And this week we have a guest who is going to uh, engage them in battle to discuss the Mount Rushmore of Karens. It is Tara Jean O'Brien. How are you, Tara? Woo! I, man, let me tell you, there's nothing I want to be associated with more than Karen's. <laughs> <laughs> so honored to be here. <laughs> I, I will, uh, I will let the, uh, from, from my descriptions, the podcast listeners have grown over the years to know that I am very handsome. Michael sure. and Richard are both very handsome men. Tara happens to be a, a very attractive blonde are you, uh, do you think you are mistaken sometimes for a Karen or perhaps uh, people might judge you negatively as such or something like that? Well, first of all, also being a handsome person myself. She's a I'll handsome person. I'll, she's a, a, handsome she's a person. very attractive, wonderful, fabulous, funny, uh, awesome person. But you are, you are, you have some in your world as a stand up comic, some material about being a Karen. Yes, I mean, it's not just me because I am a white woman in my, in the middle of an age, middle age, I would say, mm -hmm. I won't say, you know, young, but mm -hmm. middle aged. Uh, I, I often, I would say in the last five years or so, I, most of the auditions I get are for a Karen type woman. In fact, on Conan O'Brien, I played a Trump supporter. Like that was on Tosh.0, I paid, the, the role was literally like conservative woman. And they show this video of a conservative woman like trying to crash like an, uh, you know, abortion rally or whatever. And like, I played that, that woman. So <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know that like, and you know, I, I'm a hundred, listen, some of the women in my family I've been waiting for them to show up in one of these Karen videos as the Karen. <laughs> so yeah, unfortunately I, I have the Karen DNA within me. It's like a sleeper cell. It could be uh, instigated <sighs> at any point. Anytime, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm let me, waiting. let me just use this opportunity then to, I guess, kind of discuss before we get into the topic, which is the Mount Rushmore of Karens throughout history, which I've mm. kind of belatedly saying uh, let's, kind of making a quick observation as to what a Karen is. Like I, I think of it, in my opinion, as this kind of um, toxic Uber entitlement that uh, an individual might have. What do you guys think about it? Tara, what do you think? I mean, yes, I think that's exactly what it is. I think it's years of of repression, right? Like, like any woman wouldn't, no matter what her color is, like she's, she's been, you know, she's faced that like you are, you know, your roles in the home, even, even today, like there's still the, the, the debate of like, you know, women who have children, women who don't, everybody has a very specific opinion on that still, but very specifically white women who use their privilege of being a white person who then get really mad that that privilege is being pointed out to them and that they can't necessarily just talk to a manager and get their way. So it is an entitled, it's like a, it's like a weaponized entitlement that they try to use mm. that they used to just yell at direct TV, like representatives anonymously on the phone, <laughs> but now there's, they're, they're all over. Ah, uh, they're, they're yeah, all as, as someone, as someone that has worked in um, uh, various areas of customer service, you've definitely uh, learned to recognize a uh, a voice on the phone of someone who is not going to take like the answer to the question <laughs> as the answer to the question. It is simply there is someone above you that can help you, that can get their way regardless of whatever the end result is. And um, yeah, it is. Um, it is an opinion that isn't necessarily based on fact, but based on, um, like you said, privilege and um, their own uh, needs being met without question. And I don't need to interrupt, Michael, but is there somebody no. that's more in charge on this podcast that I could talk to <laughs> about this? Oh God, this is this is this is the pat. This is the yeah, talk to Jeff. This is the pass the buck <laughs> podcast where Jeff will hand it back to me, and then I'll. <laughs> Yeah. Eh, shift it over to Richard and it'll and, just oh, goes hey, around. We're closing, we're closing. Sorry. Could you just come back tomorrow? I'm just wondering who's more in charge. <laughs> I'm just wondering. After uh, this, this year, after this year, uh, it's Jeff. Jeff is definitely, <laughs> uh, taking the, 
taken the reins on this um, ship and we're going to mix metaphors and yeah. all that stuff. Um, one day I hope to get it back. So um, <laughs> let's just jump in and discuss. I would also along the way like to say um, that we do not believe that toxic male uh, entitlement is not a huge problem in the world. Uh, but this time, <laughs> we're just kind of focusing the lens on uh, this new phenomenon. So uh, uh, Tara has insisted that she go first. Um, no. It, since oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Why don't you mansplain it to me, Jeff, about how oh, numbers work? Oh, <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, I'm just going to be quiet, and I'm going to listen <laughs> while you... Tell us your first Karen throughout history. Okay. Um, Karen's throughout history. Uh, I think this one, I'm going to start with the most obvious one because there was just a TV show about this. We'll call her woman. Um, Phyllis Shafley. Uh, she is, there was a TV show. They just did an FX show called Mrs. America starring Kate Blanchett. And she played Phyllis Shafley. And Phyllis Shafley is essentially the reason that we don't have the Equal Rights Amendment in the Constitution. And what the Equal Rights Amendment does, it's a proposed amendment designed to you know, guarantee legal equal rights for all Americans, regardless of sex. Um, and sort of like the legal reasons for that is it would, you know, there's distinctions between men and women still in matters of divorce. Uh, property, own, you know, owning property, employment, all sorts of different things. And so she very sp specifically campaigned hard against this. And she was like, nope, this is not what we should, we should not have this. Uh, she was a lawyer. She was a conservative activist. So it wasn't like she was just some dumb, dumb Karen, like in, you know, in a park, like yelling at people. Like she was a schooled woman and this is what she chose to do with wow. her time. What was her justification on it? Was that conservative kind of, it's not what it says in the Bible, the, this and that, or what it was? That I, you know, from, from, I don't think she's necessarily, she doesn't, she wasn't necessarily like, a Bible thumper, like obviously she used those those absolutely like anything she could she could sort of like get under her belt. Um, but she's basically just super anti-feminist and saying oh. that like you know the woman's the woman's zone is in the home, and if you take that away from her, you know you masculinize her and you feminize men, right? And we don't want a society that's like that. So, you know, passing a constitutional amendment saying women have equal rights, we don't need it. We don't need to do it those dirty feminists with their unshaven armpits mm -hmm. get out of here. Wow. Well, I gotta, I gotta watch that uh, show or that, that um, it's not an, it's a narrative. It's, but it's kind of a pseudo it's a based on true events. Of course. To be yeah. fair. I didn't yeah. watch, I couldn't watch it. All. I, there's also, she's very, <laughs> she's an upsetting person. And I think a lot of people felt that way, but uh, I bet the show's uh, really good. Okay. All right. That's a cool opening gambit there. What's interesting about that for me is I think of, um, some of the female, like how you could support a president such as Donald Trump or individuals such as mm -hmm. Donald Trump, who, uh, who is just on the books as a sexist, chauvinist, pig, horrible person, pussy grabber. Sorry, bleep. Um, and I, I can, from what I've heard or from people discussing things. Um, there is a power structure in this hegemony that we live in, in which many women have uh, subordinate power to men and to their husbands. And uh, going along with the decisions that their husbands make for them is a way to make sure that you have a roof over your head and that you still can be connected to your children and to your family and to all these things that are your foundation. And to hear that a woman would support interests other than their own sounds bizarre at first until you think of that person as being beholden monetarily and uh, in, in her family to the decisions of this person, to, to, to a man or men who control this organization. So it sounds like cowardice at first, and then you realize how many things are tied together. You have to say goodbye to everything that you are connected to so and so the women who who buck that norm are in, incredibly brave and and it's a profoundly challenging thing to do so that's that's fascinating guys what do you think about this phil shafley gal yeah i, I think it's a great pick you know i wonder i just 
doing a little bit of research while you guys were talking, otherwise known as our our old friend Wikipedia. <laughs> exactly. On the show. <laughs> Um, and one of the, one of her points uh, for arguing against the Equal Rights Amendment was that it would take away some of the traditionally feminine or female uh, things that, that society would provide to them, such as no longer having separate men's and women's bathrooms uh-huh. or uh, not being exempt from the uh, selective service, the possible yeah. draft. Um, so... I just find I I I I find her to be a yeah, very Richard, Richard character. Richard is pro killing women, is what he's saying. What? I yeah, got that. To, to, I got yeah. That. yeah, yeah. Just uh, uh, that, that we've anyone established but me. that that's canon on the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> glad to be here. Super glad to be here again. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Sarcasm, sarcasm. Okay, so uh, Richard and Michael, who is who among you is going to take on Tara? first i'll 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 choose the i'll do our first choice and um you mentioned being kind of um uh lost out in the park and i'm going to choose someone um named um amy cooper who became famous in this last year uh as the central park bird watcher Uh who had um uh was famous for like calling the cops on um a african-american gentleman who was bird watching uh, because uh, he had the nerve to inform her of the rules of the park of keeping her dog on a leash. And Amy Cooper was a person that didn't have her dog on the leash and um, uh, proceeded to uh, call the cops and uh, threaten this man saying that there was this African-American man, uh, you know, ass- not quite assaulting me, but threatening me and um, cursing at me. And, uh, you know, of course in, our 2020 age, everything was caught on video and um, just the gall of the person to try to uh, bring in a cops to a situation where she was obviously in the wrong and to uh, threaten this person um, with, uh, with the police for doing nothing other than him observing the law is just kind of the ultimate of like care and behavior and the irony isn't lost that this person also had the last name of Cooper, um, that these two people just shared the same last name, um, but everything else seemed to be so different in terms of just how they interact with the world. One very, very much following the rules, the other one assuming the rules don't apply to them. And, you know, we have spent so much time in this last year um, trying to maintain our own uh our own health being socially distanced and engaging in outdoor activities apart from each other and something as so banal and so, uh, I don't know, so lame as bird watching, no offense to all the bird watchers out there, that this is this like this thing that could be this focal point for like um, racism and hate and a careless behavior is just like, they can get you, they'll go they'll go for you no matter where you are <laughs> no, and it doesn't nothing. matter like <laughs> there's <Nowhere> nothing safe. <laughs> there's nothing there's nothing so bo- so boring as watching birds that is off limits to a uh, per- person's own uh, misguided um, sense of mm. uh, injustice yeah do you feel like that um, so this is ma- this is throughout history we've had all these karens and this is one of the peak karen moments of the last year uh, this aspect of it. And it's not just in regards to uh, entitlement. Um, it is a racially motivated, racially involved incident. So uh, that's that's an interesting aspect that we haven't even brought up yet is that the racist. I, I don't even, the, the interesting thing is I, I don't know if it was necessarily, I mean, she did use, I guess I can say, I'm not going to, I'm not going to defend a person, but it's sad when it's such an immediate fallback in terms of trying to protect yourself or trying to, uh, you know, other somebody else. Like it could have just, she could have called and it could have been like, this person's trying to touch my dog or this person's trying to grab my dog, but then it turned into an African-American man. And like just those three words, you know, after the, um, uh, all of the protests from this last year and all of the uh, history of the United States uh, that is kind of carried forth. It's just, 
it's so, I don't know, obvious. And so just built into this part, built into uh, a society as like a, a scapegoat for like, oh, well, if I just say these three words, it will yeah, automatically, uh, you know, impugn them against uh, whatever the police think. And I and think the- it's a power thing. I remember the Amy, the Amy Cooper chick. It's like, because he gets her, he films her before she picks up the phone and her threat is like, I'm going to call the cops and tell them you're a black guy and I'm a white woman. Like it was like very specifically not veiled mm-hmm. in, in mm-hmm. any mm-hmm. way. So her case, and by the way, they did take away her dog, which was like, I think she got it back, but it sort of goes to show like what people really cared about. Cause her dog was like hanging and whatever, but yeah, she just, she didn't, she didn't have anything else. So she decided that this was her weapon, right? Even yeah. though she wasn't really threatened, really. Yeah. yeah. And the invisibility of privilege is something that people are, I, I know that that, People of color feel it. People, white, white, not non non persons of color. I, I can't believe how hard it is to convince a non person of color that they have privilege. Uh, especially, I mean, we we all seem to be the heroes and sometimes victims of our own story. But to to not recognize that you have some status and privilege by virtue of your skin color in the United States at this time is ridiculous. And for her to leverage that by picking up the phone and calling a person who was in law enforcement, whoever she knew she was going to call, she was likely non, a non-person of color or an individual who was aware of certain statistics in regards to crime and how it is heavily weighted on persons of color so that, that she knew she was going to have a sympathetic, sympathetic ear. And so she, here she is telling this guy in, in no coded words whatsoever. You know, I'm going to get you in trouble because you're black. I'm going to call them and tell them you're black. And you know what that means. Of course he knows what that means. Is he an yeah. attorney too? That the guy or something? Like I, that? And I don't want to minimize, like she might've actually been genuinely afraid when this first happened, right? Like mm-hmm. we don't know, we're not her, we can't answer for it. But there does have to be, I think for, especially for white women speaking as a white woman there are times where it's like if you go to that and we've all had our bad moments or we all had our misbehaving like anybody if you had a camera on you 24 hours a day you've done some stuff you don't want other people to know about but there has to be this ability for us to then stop and be like whoa i'm so sorry i did that let me back up how can i fix it i think that's the step we all just need to be allowed to like Maybe I, maybe this, maybe she did like try to use that and then go like, wait, I'm not threatened. You are a normal person. Maybe I should step down from, but that's like, she just doubled down and fully called the cops. Yeah. Overreacted and yeah. Okay. Amy Cooper, Amy Cooper. All right. uh, Tara, what is your second choice? Oh, I'm going to number two. Okay. We're going back again. We're going back in history, people. Wow. This Karen... Her name is Kate, which is not that far off. Her name is Kate Branch, and she is allegedly the reason for the Salem witch trials. Oh. Oh, Oh, so this is taking it. This is like OG Karen. This is like Uh Karen who is using her little white power, you know, to not, I mean, you know, not white power yet, but soon to be white power. It's not Anyways, black magic. It's not black magic. Yeah. <laughs> well, blah, 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 blah. okay. So she was like the 17 year old and she was a teenager. So she knew what she's doing. Okay. So she was a 17 year old servant of like a really rich, like couple in town in Stamford, Connecticut. And she started having what she told everybody were these painful fits in the middle of the night. And she would wake up like covered in bruises. And so her bosses are like, wow, you know, our daughter had like seizures or something, but, and, but, you know, like we sort of believe that there's something happening to you. So what she says is happening to her is these other two women in town, these, this woman, um, Elizabeth and this woman named Mercy were coming into her bedroom as spirits. They would disguise themselves as spirits and like pinch and hit her in the night. Okay. So she has this convincing enough story. So her bosses take her and are like, these two women are like coming in and they're, they're trying to make her sign a pact with the devil. Mm. Okay. And so essentially like her testimony, and then she gets like, so these two women, Elizabeth and Mercy are also like 
I'm going to say like, maybe people don't like them in town. And so they all start saying like, yeah, I've, I've, I've seen them in my dreams too. They come in the middle of the night and they try to F me up. And so this turned into a conviction for one of them just on like their word, because she worked for this prominent couple in town. Thankfully, like their convictions were like uh, overturned. However, this is what sort of kicked off the Salem witch trials because this was a very small community a very religious community and she was essentially like we don't know a lot about her after this but basically like she what we can only assume is she was used by her rich you know bosses and they're like hey we hate these other chicks over here so let's really fix them and then whoops we're we we now a bunch of people a bunch of women are being burned at the stakes as witches Mm -hmm. and now we can't really we can't go back on that because we said it was happening wow kate kate branch (laughs) so it's not a a karen's uh behavior doesn't just cause a stir at the cracker barrel it's like uh it could cause yeah hanging she carried it up she carried she (laughs) carried witches like she got women (laughs) killed (laughs) <laughs> yes, I think the worst part of this is so many productions at high schools of The Crucible that had, <laughs> yeah, we've all suffered. We've all <laughs> suffered. Yes, yes, those poor women who were burned at the stake, they were, they were, they died, but we had to sit through um, a John Proctor uh, being played by a 15 year old kid. Okay. Um, <laughs> wow. So that's interesting too, is that the amount of, uh, in which the culture and the society at the time, um, it wasn't uh, a another individual. It was actually summoning in devils and spirits and all that kind of stuff. I love it. I love it. All right, uh, Ricardo, what's your choice for the second Karen? All right, uh, our second choice is Carrie Nation. Oh wow! Who was a uh, a uh, anti alcohol crusader? Oh Ooh. yeah. What a, I don't even like her. Yeah, yeah already on, already on a, a bad path with me. Yeah. Um, late 1800s, early 1900s. And she was known for her hatchetations, where she would literally <laughs> go through Kansas, go go into like Topeka or, you know, s- some town like that, Kansas City, another one, um, where she was well known for going in with her hatchet and oh. just basically wrecking the bar. Oh, yeah. Wow. So not cool. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a. Uh, it was definitely a, a one way to try and get rid of of bars is to literally just mm-hmm. destroy them. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, she uh, said that she was a, a, as as many people apparently were in in the time she was spoken to directly by by God. Mm-hmm. As, as as was the want, I think, in the late eighteen hundreds, mm-hmm. early nineteen hundreds, um, who told her to go to Kiowa which is a town in, in eastern Kansas, I believe, and um, basically take something in your hands and throw at these places in Kiwa and smash them. Hmm. So uh, she grabbed a bunch of rocks, went into a saloon, announced that, men, I have come to save you from a drunkard's fate, and just started th- destroying the, the entire like bar uh, selection of bottles with her rocks. Wow. Yeah, uh, she seems like she was a lot of fun at parties. <laughs> yeah. Um, she eventually she was arrested more than thirty times for doing this, mm-hmm. and she paid off her jail fines, uh, according to Wikipedia, from her lecture tour fees and sales of souvenir hatchets. So she had like this. <laughs> she had like this side hustle of selling branded Carry Nation <laughs> hatchets that you could get as a souvenir. Which I just think is just wild. <laughs> Can I say, is she like, she's, she's like, she's old timey Sarah Palin, right? That seems very mm-hmm. Sarah Palin. Yeah, seems, yeah. <laughs> yeah, very, very much, uh, very much of, of, of a piece, I believe. Okay, not to defend Carrie Nation, but the, uh, let's say you were a doctor uh, with a cure for uh, the bubonic plague this thing that was killing so many people and that was uh, lowering the quality of life for so many people that had impacts on every part of society. And you had a cure for that. Would you not want to convincingly uh, demonstrate that cure to people and to, to offer that cure? And it seems like abstinence and, and 
getting rid of alcohol was one thing, one way to deal with what was, I mean, I, I think if even in that era, alcohol was easier to find than like purified water. So it was probably right. something that was a very common, alcoholism was a very common uh, sociological problem. Yeah, it should be it should be noted that her first husband actually died of alcoholism. I didn't bring oh. that up because it's not very funny, but that's <laughs> doesn't really help with the, the bit. But the, the, so there was obviously some personal reasons behind it, and the, yeah. the temperance movement, you know, was was a real thing, and obviously it eventually led to uh, prohibition. Mm -hmm. um, although she died before uh, prohibition was enacted, um, and yeah, I mean. I think it's an example of of someone with good intentions, maybe. Yeah. Just taking it too far. Yeah. Yeah. Which you I think is a very can be a very caring thing to do and, and to some extents. I was gonna say it sounds very fundamentalist to me, right? Because she's like, I have this idea and I know I'm right. So I'm gonna make you guys like look at how right I am, which I think is a very it's a very Karen like like that's one of the top Karen qualities, right? Like a lot of them are fundamentalists in that like, I know better, let me show you. Yeah, why. It's, a, it's all tied into the privilege, right? It's, it's yeah. this idea that I, I can sort of preach from the mountaintop because I have have a pulpit to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, one, one's, yeah, one's own personal experience trumps that of that, of an expert. So no yes. matter how, how, well-versed uh, a scientist is in a, per a particular, um, oh, let's just say a vaccination. Uh, my own <laughs> personal beliefs have yeah. come in and decided for me um, because I know better. And, you know, has that's uh, been the ruin for so many people. Yeah, it's, it's uh, not, she could win uh, more people over with this discussion of moderation. <laughs> Than perhaps going in with a hatchet. It's not like she got wrapped up in her personal brand too. If somebody were to say, "Carrie, they did this study, and you know, you can, <laughs> if only you drink a cup of coffee to balance out this or that," she would say, "I, I bought all these hatchets. I got to, we got to double down on this, this, this hatchetization kind of thing." So, she was I love the idea that it was just about getting rid of hatchets. <laughs> she just when had so of, many. She had so many all of hatchets, and I'm not going back. What it's am I gonna too, do? It's too late. Listen, if you guys, guys, if men had let her have a job, right? Maybe she could have sold those hatches instead of just trying to get rid of them. <laughs> That's true. Oh, I think we're kind of dialing in the root cause of many of these things when you <laughs> get that in there. Okay, so what's fun about this is we're halfway done, and uh, we're gonna invite you to go uh, download and rate and review all the other um, episodes that we have about. Uh, women and the horrible things that they've done throughout history Wait, how dare you no we don't we don't talk about that <laughs> we, how we don't, dare you thank you tara uh you need to stick up uh, well no we're woke bros here on the mount rushmore podcast and we talk about a lot uh -huh. of crazy stuff and so you can do download rate and review past episodes just uh go to mount rushmore podcast.com you could search there and find our past episodes or go to anywhere that you uh receive podcasts and then you could also get in a dialogue with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and suggest future topics we have in the past, uh, in, even invited topic suggestors to be participants in the podcast. It doesn't have to happen, but it could. Ooh. And then I also want to ask you to, uh, um, to listen to our good friend, Tara O'Brien, tell you about where you could follow her on social and what she's up to and what she does. Oh my God, what a great, th thank you so much. Uh, well, uh, what do I do? I'm, I'm a comedian, I'm a writer, I'm an actor. Uh, you can find me on most social media, it's on Instagram and Twitter, at tartarsauce1, which is T-A-R-T-A-R-S-A-U-C in the number one. Uh, I too, I know this is shocking, I also, I also have podcasts. Oh. Uh, I know, right? Wow. We have a great, we have a great B-movie review podcast called Cinema Craptaculous where we watch bad <laughs> movies and we review them. And so, you know what? We've seen some real doozies. Uh, this week, I have to watch a movie called Zombievers, about zombie beavers. Oh, wow. <laughs> it, I have seen that movie. I have oh, yeah? It. Okay, don't ruin it for me. I, I won't. I won't. I'll just say you're in for a treat. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, wow. Wait. 
<laughs> I can't wait. Uh, but yeah, that's what I'm, you know, in lockdown, what can you really do? You can podcast. So that's a lot that. of what I've been doing. And uh, I'm glad to be here today. I have to thank you, Tara, because I've known you for nigh on a year-ish. I know. You've never mentioned a podcast, and that is almost antithetical to who we are <laughs> as a self-promoter. So it's like That's friends, really funny. Friends yeah. don't make friends listen to their podcast. <laughs> oh, and here I had made you be on our sub. So. Oh, I love it. Are you kidding? Cinematic. Oh my God. Say the name again, please. Cinema Craptaculous. Okay. I gotta check that out. I gotta it's check just that out. cinema and it's craptaculous. And there's we have there's a there's a couple different um, genres of the podcast. Like we do the B sides, so the B movies. There's also like a terror tunnel. They do scary movies. So like there's a few different hosts, and everybody's smart. One one of us, not me, won an M- Emmy. Stephanie, she won an Emmy. Right. Um, so so there's some cool people that host and me. All right, so, uh, yeah. avail yourself of that podcast. And there you go. All right, let's move on and plow through it. The second half, we got four more Karens waiting to jump out at you and scare you and call the police on you. Uh, 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 Tara, what is your third Karen? I like that you made it sound so exciting. Like, we don't want more Karens. Come on, we all want Karens. Okay, so I really just want history Karens because I feel like we really need to see the root. So my next one is Madeline Vinton Dahlgren, who was one of the most vocal, most outspoken, anti-suffragists in america oh girl she is one of the reasons that it took so effing long for women to be able to vote and again on a theme very well schooled uh she could speak and she wrote books she could speak french spanish and italian she translated numerous books into these other languages which means who knows what she left out. I'm just, as, as I was reading this, I became very concerned. So she was Anyways. a Karenina, a, a Karina. She was all the Karens. Okay. okay. Signora Karina. Yeah. <laughs> Karina. Mm-hmm. We're going there. Okay. Anyways, she basically believed that granting rights, granting women the right to vote would threaten peace and happiness and create hostility in marriages and produce an increase in divorces. Oh, wow. Isn't that terrible? Wow. Yeah. And so she was a writer at the time and she became known as like, she was one of the social queens of Washington and she started um, like the social club and she basically started like writing anti-suffragist rhetoric. Um, she started writing short, tor- short stories about all the terrible things that would happen if, you know, women were allowed to vote because what else would they want? What would they want next? Hmm. Like there would be no more patriarchal boundaries. Oh, I just hate her more. I talk about her. Mm-hmm. Anyways, so she was basically like women should be at home and we don't want to, you know, we don't want to upset the balance because what would men do? Their feelings would be hurt. Wow. You know, I need to retract an earlier statement because women don't, doesn't sound like this woman needed anybody to inspire her with information or um, to think about the the effects of uh, the woman's right to vote. She was very intelligent and she could come up with all this BS on her own. Thank you. <laughs> it's not like she, she may have had a husband or a partner or somebody yes. who was telling her, yo, chill. <laughs> this is, this is not, you know, so yeah, I, I, I should not have said that somehow it's men that cause women to be Karen. So that's completely ridiculous. So uh, um, I, I, Michael or Richard, have you heard of her? I'd never heard of her. No, I hadn't either. Ooh. Yeah, she's hit. She's trying to be hidden because she. Well, first of all, she didn't get. She didn't want to vote, so she doesn't get the vote that I picked her. I voted for her. <laughs> I pulled her out, and I was like, "Listen, look at you. Look at what you've done, Madeline. Look at what you've done." She was like, "There you are voting. See, I told you, women." Well, some, vote. something tells me she would not have voted for Biden Harris. Just you going out think. on a limb. <laughs> okay, Michael, what is the third Karen to emerge? Well, I'm gonna still stick within the modern age because. Okay. Um, uh, there is just so much awfulness that has happened, um, especially oh. in the last in the last month. I mean, we are we are actually recording this on uh, February seventh, and on um, January sixth, our entire Oof. capital of the United States was stormed by oh, yeah. an insurrectionist mob of like this combination of like morons and like just uh, idiots. I don't know what's is there a, is there 
a distinction between the two. I don't know. But one of them, it really stood out that my, um, my wife, Emily, pointed out to me. She's like, oh, you, you got to mention that woman. And I was like, which one? And I was like, oh, I know the one. And uh, her name is Elizabeth. I don't know her last name, but she was from Knoxville. Oh. She was this woman. She's this woman that uh, was recorded coming out of the, the Capitol with like tears in her eyes. And, oh, yeah. Um, just like crying and a reporter, you know, kind of confronted her and says, what happened to you? And she's like, she's like, oh, I, I got maced. And she's like, you got maced? And he's like, yeah, he went into the Capitol and all this stuff. And what? And the reporter just said, why are you trying to, why are you going in? And he's like, we were storming the Capitol. It's a revolution. And just, just the lack of um, understanding of the situation and just the expectation that you can just go in and that nothing bad is going to happen and everything is fine. Yeah. And like, you know, the kicker is that she's wearing like this um, uh, piano key scarf, which is just <laughs> uh, so <laughs> awful. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, you know, it's just, it's just this perfect encapsulation of what like this entire you know, mm. this kind of Trumpist movement Oof. is, is that these are the things that are for me and I can do whatever I want. And so I'm going to do them. And then, oh my God, the consequences. And like, they have no idea that this is this thing that is just going to happen. And you just assume yeah. that uh, I'll be fine. And, you know, obviously that the storming of the Capitol and everything wasn't one perpetrated, um, uh, primarily by women it was mostly these gung-ho moronic men dressed up as you know mm -hmm. vikings and you know wearing their best paintball gear and um <laughs> yeah you know this this weekend warrior you know gi joe cosplay nonsense mm -hmm. um a lot of them obviously were so super dangerous and all that stuff and so it's not to downplay that but just the people that went along with it assuming that they were just going to go in there and I don't know, get a selfie and be a part of this thing that was obviously much bigger than what they thought it was. They thought they'd just, they'd go along for the, yeah. for the whatever. And it's just like this person just, she literally just, it is just such a picture of uh, Karenism and entitlement and uh, just a, a horrible person. Mm -hmm. I'm glad she got maced. I have, I don't know if I've ever said those words before. But sure. Was she buoyed by? I think of those insurrectionists as being buoyed by. Was it the Michigan State Capitol in which they were allowed to just kind of show up with guns? I forget. Oh yeah, yeah. And, right. And then they tried to. Then they had a plot to to kidnap the governor, who was yeah. a woman as well. Yeah. 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 So so far they were all kind of treated like people who just kind of veered off the tour accidentally and were gently <laughs> <laughs> pushed back onto the right path. So. Yeah, that, that that view that a let's just say a person of color or somebody might not grow up with that if I do bad things everything's going to be okay, it sounds mm. like something that is part of this um, in, entitlement kind of behavior. There's definitely there's yes, the, I think the race thing definitely has uh, you know has been played out and and been talked about how you know if a, a, a single black person had yeah. gotten you know within a hundred yards of the Capitol with a gun or yeah. or any sort of type of weapon, they would have been immediately taken down. But the privilege that has been granted to all of these people, not, you know, uh, 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 not just the Karens that we're talking about to just go in and do what they want. And, you know, some cases they've talked about the police have kind of just uh, kind of sidestepped or, you know, kind of treated them like a, a turnstile has been, you know, yeah, it's just really capped this entire year of, uh, protest over social injustice and um, just the treatment of, you know, just different classes of people. And often mm -hmm. women are treated, you know, so differently from the outset as our, um, as our uh, minorities. And it's just, just one more, just one more feather in the cap of this um, great nation of ours. Who's it? Jen? Yeah. Jenna Ryan, the Texas, the Dallas real estate agent who oh, posed, posed that for a, a victory selfie and just says, I'm completely innocent in anything that I've done. I even think of uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene Ugh. and the idea that not only are your actions, um, you know, un 
punishable, but you can say something like, I was led to believe, I was allowed to believe things that weren't true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you, you I, are, you're not responsible. I, I also, I, I know this isn't directly related to, to, to my individual choice, but you know, we're kind of slightly off topic, but just the person that has uh, decided at some point that they are going to print out um, the card that allows yeah. them to go into, <laughs> yeah, to, to go into a grocery store and not wear a mask because of, uh, you know, whatever uh, nonsensical language that sounds official. Um, yeah. You know, I have, um, you know, back in our day, I had so many different pizza club cars and memberships <laughs> to a club that, you know, existed between me and you know, uh, two dozen of my friends, and it was yeah. like. It's not like this gets you anywhere. This doesn't get you a discount. This doesn't get you any yeah. special privilege. It's that just and the literally female, the, the female body inspector card that I got at the state fair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeff, you showed that to me the first time I met you, which I thought was weird, but okay. Yeah, I'm supposed to keep it a secret. I'm undercover, but you know, which is weird. <laughs> oh, what were okay. you going to say, Tara? I, I think we keep mansplaining over you, so I apologize. Oh, no, not at all. No, not at all. I was just going to say, I think this goes back, especially that woman that you just talked about with her piano scarf. And nobody ever told us, can she play the piano or was she just wearing a cute little piano scarf? I'd like to know the answer to that. But it's sort of this idea, especially with the last couple of women I've talked about too, there is an idea that white women over time have been sort of this protected sort of group, right? Like there used to be advertisements where it'd be like, don't let, you know, don't let a black man try to marry your white wife or, you know, your white woman. There's just, there's a protectedness of it. And it's sort of the same strategy that, um, Republicans have used for years the so-called Southern strategy to try to convince poor white people that like the only thing that they're better than, you know, that the thing they need to worry about are, you know, people of color that taking mm -hmm. things away from them. Meanwhile, it's all the rich white people who are controlling everything that are just taking everything away from ed everybody. But they're like, we've created this cute little war, you know, with poor white people and minorities and but let's let, yeah. that'll keep them busy. That'll keep them busy. I think it's the same thing with like white women. There's this expectation that like, Oh, well, somebody will come along and protect us. And like, I can storm the Capitol. I can't believe somebody would mace me. Mm -hmm. Like, it's an, in, it's an indignant, like, it's a surprise. The thing that's, I think, why everybody's reacting to it is they're shocked when they're seeing so much surprise on all these women's, like, reactions. Like, what? I yeah. Yeah. They, they can't believe, oh, why? What is this? The consequences of my actions? I've never seen these before. <laughs> <Yeah>. How dare you? <laughs> yeah. Okay, wait. Who's up? It must be. Uh, Tara. I have one, Tara I have with her one job. I have one job. Tara, what is God your final choice? I'm, I'm the worst. Um, I'm the we've worst. also reverted to Tara. It's Tara. I'm Tara. not going to make a Karen uh, thing out of it. I'm not oh going to Karen it. I've said Tara the first 20 times, and then. <laughs> That's really, my fault. Okay. No. But you know what? That's on Very, me. How dare you? I'll let it go this time. Okay. Okay. This last Karen is the most Karen. I mean, this is the epitome of Karening because it's the worst thing, which I think led directly to January 6th. Her name is Rosie Chappelle, and she is the founder of the Woman's KKK. Ooh. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> so the regular KKK was founded, and the chicks, like the wives and stuff, are like, wait, what about us? We're also super racist, too. <laughs> so, anyways, the, basically at the beginning of the KKK, they sort of just use women as exactly what I said before. It's just like, we have to protect these, these white women. We don't want like all these black guys to marry our white women, right? So then she was like, okay. So by the 1920s, roughly 500,000 women had joined the WKKK, okay? And most of them were from stable middle-class communities, okay? And they were headquartered in Little Rock, Arkansas. <sighs> Arkansas, we gotta talk about a lot of things. <laughs> but basically they're like super Karens because this is where this is where all this sort of started, all the sort of modern things that we hear about because this is the early 1900s where they're focused on traditional family values, the role of women in the home and an effort to restore and preserve white and Christian supremacy. Hmm. So she basically organized boycotts against anti-Klan store owners. She, this is a good one. She worked to get Catholic school teachers fired because Catholics, they're part of the problem. Um, and then all, what she would do and she and her friends and all the Klan members, they would all 
and this is where we get it. They would run for school board seats and Congress and all these things because they ultimately understood where the real power was, right? Well, like when you could write the laws and you could be on the boards, then like you can do whatever you want. So anyways, she also found time to, you know, hold uh, carnivals and like do, you know, food drives and things like that um, and also burn crosses. So yeah. Oh, wow. Wowzers. Rosie Chappelle. Do you think there was any, so I'm not, I, I'm not re religious. Uh, I, I grew up in a, fam a household that led me to have uh, very negative views. My dad was, uh, went to Jesuit high school and, and had a negative experience in Catholic high school. And so uh, he was very much anti-organized religion. And I did not see the positive aspects of mm. what I only saw the negative. I only saw the guy on Sun, the televangelist asking you for money. I only saw war, holy wars, and things like that. Um, uh, do you think these weaponized KKK Karens, uh, these four Ks, <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> uh, do you think they thought? they were doing something good that even the guys couldn't do like we're we're gonna we're gonna be the nicer side of this or we're gonna be the something or the, you think they're just as like you know i think there's also i think it goes back to because you know women don't have any power they definitely still didn't have any power in the kkk either really when it came down to it i think it's a matter of like doing all they can for legit legitimacy in, yeah. in any part of anything yeah yeah Look, I just want to, we just want to do something. We want to show that we can, we can accomplish something. Wow. That's cool. What a, what a, and it's, you couldn't just do like a, like a, a beach cleanup or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Come, on. <laughs> Come on. Wow. Uh, that's something. Okay. Tara, that's your fourth one. You've shared four. That's it. That's all. Yeah. This is it. This is okay. I think you have the foundation for a junior college course, at least. Thank you. <laughs> At least. If anybody would like to buy my course, yeah. I'll be selling it after this. Or a funny, like, I think maybe the publisher you should go after is like Chronicle Books or something like that. A funny, <laughs> cute Karen's Through a History book, like we're partner with an illustrator or something like that, unless you're an artist. Uh, you got something here. Because hearing you talk about these Karen's Through History and breaking them down is pretty awesome. I think it's pretty terrifying. I think that like I there's agree. a, there's a, there's a, because when you told me like what the idea was, I was like, because there's so many good current Karens, which I'm sure you all, we're all familiar with, but I was like, where did it start? And I'm like, there's a very specific history. We, us, us Karen lineage, we're going, we're, we're, we're way <laughs> set in the back. Yeah. It is uh, the thread that goes through society. Okay. Uh, Michael and Richard, <laughs> last ditch effort. What do you got? Our, last, our, our Hail Mary here, so yeah. to speak, is... Uh... <laughs> is uh, Mar Mary Hale. <laughs> I yes. get it. I get it. That's that. Uh, that's her name. No, uh, our last choice is Tipper Gore. Oh, oh wow. okay. that's a good one. Yeah. Who I think pretty much epitomized the eighties Washington housewife slash busybody mm -hmm. um, that, that kind of proceeded to stick their noses into popular culture. And with <sighs> Tipper Gore specifically, this was with the parents music resource center that she and some other Washingtonian wives founded um, as a way to try and basically restrict and censor uh, popular music. Um, they originally started out with a uh, publishing what they called the uh, Filthy 15, 15 songs in popular music that they thought were the most objectionable. Hmm. And some of them, like one of them was Darling Nikki, which is a pretty damn dirty song. But another one was was Dress You Up by Madonna. Oh. Because apparently they, they thought the lyrical content was too sexy. Because hmm. Tipper Gore walked in on her like 11-year-old 11, 11 daughter listening to this song and was horrified by it. Um, eventually, somehow managed to get a, a Senate hearing on what they called porn rock. And I think <laughs> People remember the, when people think of the Tipper Gore, they think of these hearings, which had Frank Zappa and John Denver and Dee Snyder all testifying against the PMRC who wanted to uh, have a warning label on uh, albums that had explicit content. 
They also wanted to make uh, albums with explicit covers only be available under the counters mm. and reassessing the contracts of musicians who were violent or sexually in concert. All these sort of things. She was some, I mean, it was so kind of big brotherish that she managed to get, like I said, Frank Zappa, John Denver, and Dee Snyder all on the same page. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A remarkable, a truly remarkable feat. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember being a kid and just watching these hearings and, and her getting dunked on by these musicians <laughs> and thinking, I want to buy some of these records. These yeah. sound these sound like the <laughs> records I should be buying. But but like we laugh about this, but she won. Yeah. They the the stick the the RIAA eventually decided to self police and put out uh, stickers on their own for ex- uh, any sort of uh, explicit content, I guess is what it would be called. She won. This is yeah. an example of a Karen who actually got her way, mm-hmm. which is very frustrating. Isn't yeah. that the label that's still on music today? It's that little warning label, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's the little parental advisor yeah. sticker. I yeah, remember that's... that. That was a big deal. Yeah, then that, that all came from Tipper Gore and the PMRC. So you have... Yeah. You have a former second lady to thank for that. I heard there was a, this is a, I'll have to get my facts straight on it, but I read something. Why start, Jeff? Why start now? <laughs> uh, does your craptacular uh, podcast have room for an <laughs> idiot who doesn't know anything? Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, do you, some of us of a certain age will recall that compact discs, there was this thing called compact discs. Uh, that were initially uh, distributed in and merchandised in something called a long box. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it was mm-hmm. roughly the size of an LP cut in half. A long box right. was because it, it was uh, created and so that retailers could use those containers that uh, LPs had been sitting in to merchandise um, compact discs. Um, but the that whole explicit warning label thing was also wrapped up in an initiative to cut back on the environmental impact of long boxes and just use the plastic thing. So the reason the long box was eliminated was a, it was a good thing, but it was, it was because that, that label was created. It got snuck in into that, uh, that bill or the whatever. So we would, huh. we might still have had those for a couple of years longer. Wait, they... so what, what you're saying is Al went to Tipper and was like, Tipper, I don't support you on this, yeah. but I need to get an environmental thing into yeah. this somehow. Yeah. So that's, okay. that was a little bit of good that came from that stupid, stupid chapter. Um, I, I, it sounds like it's almost another example of a person. There's always somebody in history intermediating on behalf of a, audience that they don't truly understand or and are fearful and underestimate that individual's ability to do what's best for them so yeah i mean in in the hearings they had uh, supposed experts um a music professor from U- uh, university of texas at san antonio for example yeah. who argued that heavy metal was different from other forms of music because it was quote unquote church music and had one of its central elements of the element of hatred and it's sort of this idea, you know, this, the idea that especially with heavy metal, that that was warping kids' brains. And of course, you mm-hmm. get into the whole Judas Priest, you know, wow. uh, trials and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Um, and it, it really is, you're targeting music that's primarily, you know, kids who just don't have any power over anything in their lives. And the one thing they can you do to express their anger or their you know, whatever it happens to be, is through music. And, you know, it was an attempt to take that away. One yeah. thing I didn't one thing I didn't know until I did the research on this, uh, the dancing song Mother was apparently mm-hmm. written about Tipper Gore. Uh. <laughs> That's a fun fact. That was a fun fact. I, I did not know that until I until I read that read it today. So there you go. I feel like the tip off should have been that her she went by the name Tipper. Tipper. Like yeah. guys, come on. Mm-hmm. We gotta, we gotta, it's right in front of our faces. <laughs> yeah. Is, yeah. When the, the, when the devil appears, will he call himself Beelzebub and tip his hat? No, he's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna go by t- Tipper. Tipper. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, uh, what they didn't know is the real music that was warping minds was Mahler's Symphony Number no. Two. Look out! Okay, uh, so we are at the end of our rope or uh, our show, and we have this opportunity to look oh. back on uh, the great choices that Richard and Michael made. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to oh. focus on what uh, the winner. Tara O'Brien uh, voted for because Tara is indeed the winner and her choices are going to go up on the Mount Rushmore. Oh, she's doing the pageant contestant. Like, oh, oh my me. God, you guys. Like, I hate you guys are reinforcing that, like, as a Karen, I'm taken care of and I'm given a participation award. Oh like, God. I deserve it. I deserve it. <laughs> she's entitled, you're entitled to it. Uh, um, Phyllis Shafley. Mm -hmm. Wait, summarize who, who was Phyllis Shafley again? Uh, she's the reason we don't have the ERA, the Equal Rights Amendment in the Constitution today. Okay. Kate Branch? She's the reason for the Salem witch trials. Oh, God. Madeline Vinton <laughs> Dahlgren? She is the, was the head of the anti-suffragists. She is the reason it took so effing long for women to get the right to vote. All right. And Rosie Chappelle? Oh, man. The leader, creator, founder of the women's KKK. <laughs> the KKK Karens. Oh, wow. Uh, wow. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, those are what was up on the Mount Rushmore. Uh, you are the winner, Tara O'Brien. Thank you so oh much for you. gracing us. And so if you would do us, uh, the audience meaning a solid and let them know again where they can find your podcast. Uh, it's Cinema Craptaculous. Uh, you can find it literally probably anywhere you can find this podcast. And uh, I'm at Tartar Sauce One at most places you can find me or Tara stand up. I think I'm a Tara stand up. I'm maybe on TikTok. Oh God. Cause I had to start a TikTok, So that's upsetting. Just oh, wow. generally. <laughs> the things Just you have generally. To do. Oh, that's what happens when you have to, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. We're going to make Jeff start doing dances <laughs> to try to promote the show. <laughs> <laughs> like the Charleston, uh, the Charleston and stuff like that. It's and all very upsetting. Tipper will come back. I am needed again. <laughs> uh, so I'm looking at the cinema craptaculous website and mm -hmm. in the terror tunnel, the, um, Killer cars, yes. Mega Python versus Gatoroid. Yeah, uh, that, I didn't do that one. Yeah, no, there's yeah, there's a lot of different episodes, but any of the ones that are called the B sides, which was the last oh, one we did, was Freeway, which by nice. the way was Reese Witherspoon's first movie. Holy bananas! Oh, and thank yes. God she it wasn't her only movie because it could have been. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, also, Spaghetti Man. That looks. Oh like yeah. Oh wow! Okay, so this is uh this is great. I'm gonna dig in here. I've got the week off from work, so I'll just spend it just sitting on a lawn chair listening to this podcast. Um, I highly recommend if you want to pick one. We watched a movie called Vibes. Have you guys okay. heard of this? You guys remember oh, yeah. this movie Cindy from Lauper? the '80s? Oh my goodness, we watched this. Oh, yeah, just a Jeff little while ago. Yeah, yeah. And I just, I God, I was so excited to watch this because I'm like, how did I miss this in the '80s? I don't remember this. And then I watched it, and I was like, oh, that's. That's why. Uh, is she, <laughs> does this have okay? All right, I'll talk about. It. We'll discuss. This yeah. Off, off, yes. off mic. Okay. All right. So uh, this has been the Mount Rushmore of Karens throughout history. Uh, I, as always, am Jeff. I'm Richard. I'm Michael. All oh, right. And <laughs> go on. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I was drinking a drink of water. I'm Tara Jean O'Brien. Thanks for having me. Oh, yes, miss. We'll get a manager right away. Uh, okay. I also would like to talk to the manager of this podcast about some editing at length time. All right.